shifting uh, gears towards uh, understanding the virtue aspect of, of Kant's ethics. Um, because again, in the book you mentioned, this has been kind of underappreciated. Uh, he's been kind of uh, uh, read as kind of this purely deontologic reading of Kant. And, and you do think that there is this fundamental place for virtue. So maybe you can uh, elaborate a little bit how you see virtue playing a role uh, in Kant's ethics and, and how it has been underappreciated and, and why so. Um, well, some of my earliest work on Kant was on what I claimed was the, the virtue ethics dimension of his moral philosophy. Um, I mean, he wrote a book called The Doctrine of Virtue. It's the second half of his metaphysics of morals. And um, the issue of developing one's moral character is clearly fundamental to Kant's moral philosophy. And this concern with character, what should I be like as a person? How should I live? Is one of the key markers of virtue ethics. Uh, the, the focus again is on the, the broader, bigger question of how should I live? What sort of person should I be? Rather than on more specific questions about which rule or principle should I use in this particular difficult situation that I'm in in order to figure out how to act. Um, but having said that, um, a couple provisos should also be inserted. Um, I do think Kant has a virtue ethics, but it's not, a, it's not an orthodox uh, Aristotelian type virtue ethics. And most of the contemporary uh, revivals of virtue ethics do track back to Aristotle. Not all of them, but most of them. Uh, Kant's, Kant's virtue ethics, well, it's a little darker, if you will. He's got a much different picture of human nature than I think most other virtue ethicists do. Mm. And yes, it is, if you will, a more deontological virtue ethics. Kant, Kant defines virtue as one's strength of will in being able to fulfill one's duties. Mm -hmm. So uh, he defines virtue and a virtuous character in in terms of one's ability to properly carry out one's duties. So it, mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I think you can say with a straight face that yes, Kantian ethics is a virtue ethics. And it was my early work in Kant's virtue ethics that in turn led me to do a much longer and more sustained investigation into his anthropology and his account of human nature. Because I, I was convinced that one needs to learn more about what Kant thinks human beings are like in order to understand why he has the kind of virtue ethics that I and others think that he does. I mean, I, I will say that the virtue ethics work represents an earlier part of my career. I haven't done as much work on it in recent years, but some other scholars have been working in this area. I, uh, one book in particular comes to mind, um, Anne Margaret Baxley. She wrote a very good work on Kant's theory of virtue. And she was, if I recall, a student of Henry Allison's. Okay. So uh, I'm not the only one who has been uh, singing this song, if you will. Mm -hmm. and, and, and maybe one related question to this uh, that you write about is also the, the duty to oneself, uh, uh, that that's really central and kind of fundamental and, and, and that provides kind of an angle into the, the virtue ethics approach uh, to Kant. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. No, Kant, Kant says in several places, if there were no duties to oneself, there wouldn't be any duties at yeah. all. Mm -hmm. uh, and many modern and contemporary moral theorists just can't make sense out of that. Yeah. I mean, it's an odd group of people who, who just dismiss the whole concept of duties to oneself, odd in the sense that they don't normally get associated with each other. But let's see, Schopenhauer, John Stuart Mill, Henry Sidgwick, Bernard Williams, <laughs> uh, uh, Kurt Beyer, um, but yeah, there have been lots of arguments made over the years against the very idea of a duty to oneself. But Kant's view is that that's the most fundamental kind of duty. And if you don't have a duty to oneself, you don't have any duties. <laughs> now, why does he hold this view? Well, because 
and it does relate to his view about the centrality of moral character. The first task in ethics is to work on oneself, to develop one's character, to learn how to constrain one's emotions and feelings and to listen to reason so that one can do what the moral law demands of oneself. And unless and until you got that kind of self-constraint and control, you're not gonna be able to carry out any duties whatsoever. Mm -hmm.